electrical engineering plants, and Serb TV. Field commanders also say politics, not weather, canceled some early bombing runs, unlike the Gulf War when Baghdad was hit hard on the very first night. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News at the State Department. That we obtained agreement for only from the Kosovo Albanians who showed they were willing to compromise for peace at the very time when Milosevic was massing his tanks and heavy artillery for the current offensive. Blair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. <coughs> As Mr. Secretary said, I was one of the members of Albanian delegation in Rambouillet, Paris, peace process. We were convinced that our signatures are necessary in order to achieve peaceful and political settlement for Kosovo issue in order to install peace and stability in the region. More than over, the events that happened in the last few weeks in Kosovo are showing that this peace was fair and decent, this uh, agreement was fair and decent agreement. Why? First of all, because in this agreement, it was obvious that stability, security, and peace in Kosovo can't be established without the NATO presence in Kosovo. Secondly, because the self-government of Kosovo and democracy in Kosovo was connected with OSCE, KVM mission in Kosovo, with European Union presence in Kosovo, that reconciliation in Kosovo is connected with European Union assistance, and finally, that the final status of Kosovo is connected with establishing of international mechanism for solving of Kosovo issue. Now, as, as we all know, we are facing very big humanitarian problem with uh, uh, refugees dispersed in Macedonia, in Albania, in Montenegro, and we are thinking definitely that returning of the deportees in Kosovo is not possible until complete withdrawal of the Serbian forces from Kosovo, and it will not be possible without NATO presence in Kosovo. This is our position. I think that, as Mr. Secretary already said, we can't connect this catastrophe with NATO strikes over Kosovo. Humanitarian catastrophe and finally tragedy in Kosovo started not in March of 1999, but in March 1989, when political autonomy was abolished. We, knew, we know very well what happened last year. We had plenty of killed persons, plenty of refugees all over Kosovo and out of Kosovo. So NATO is now dividing the past of Kosovo from the future of Kosovo. The past of Kosovo is full with blood, full with sorrow, and I hope that the future of Kosovo will be the bright one, will be that the Kosovo will face democracy, peace, stability, and that the stability and peace in Kosovo will be established due to the presence of the NATO forces in Kosovo, due to the international efforts to bring future in Kosovo. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, our last speaker is Midjan Kilmendi, a TV journalist, who was one of those forced to leave Pristina and to take the overcrowded train to the border. Some of you have already heard me say that, in truth, those whom we describe as refugees outside and inside the Macedonian border when Mr. Secretary. Yeah, it were, it, there were uh, very sad moments, and uh, the, I was a witness of the scenes that I have seen only on the big movies. Uh, and I can name it, uh, and one of movies, maybe a Schindler's List, but the sad moment in, on this whole uh, terrible uh, thing is that for the three or four days of this big deportation of, of, of all the people of the, of the biggest town of, in Kosovo, I didn't, I didn't uh, met the only one uh, sh uh, Serb Schindler who, will, who was uh, ready to help or to be near, uh, near us or to ask maybe what you are doing with these people. And this is 
I think, the sad moment of all this, of, of my experience. Every, as my family concerned, everything started three days before NATO, stri NATO strikes, strikes in, in the Kosovo. Uh, paramilit Serbian paramilitary forces thrown a bomb on a, a cafeteria, a well-known cafeteria, Koha in Pristina, as, and as, cons as a casualty, my, one, of my, uh, one of my brothers uh, left left was uh, was killed by the bomb there he was Arianit Kelimendi he was 30 years old and totally innocent in this uh, whole drama <coughs> and uh, uh, I was hiding in Pristina all the time because the Serbian forces started to kill by the list and they started with Bayram Kilmandi, the well-known and famous uh, uh, lawyer of us, and he was killed by his two uh, uh, d d sons, yeah. together with their sons, his sons. And uh, also in town Mitrovica was killed uh, a well-known writer and act LDK uh, polit uh, activist, uh, named Latif Berisha. He was uh, 50, 50 years old, around 50s. He's well known, he's uh, famous, and he was killed just because he was active in all these uh, uh, Kosovo, uh, Kosovo problems, trying to, to find the re resolve and solve this uh, problem. And of course, the third one was where uh, uh, Agim Hairizi. Uh, syndicate uh, leader of a syndicate and he was killed in his house with his mother and his 12 years old son those killings make a big uh, uh, made a big terror between all the citizens of Pristina and everybody everybody were uh, uh, trying to be hiding to, to survive and everybody uh, change here their places of living and hide, hide himself. But, for, uh, but the, the Serb military forces started to empty whole the neighborhood, Albanian neighborhoods from suburb of Pristina, like Tashlija, Velania, Dardania, Kodra, Etrimave, and all Albanian. Uh, uh, Albanian uh, well-known uh, well-known neighborhoods I was hiding one of these neighborhoods I, I have uh, my house there and uh, the para, uh, police forces unmasked and uh, very well armed uh, sh shooting on the uh, on the air and give us three to four minutes to leave houses and uh, we didn't know where we were uh, driven, but uh, after that, we will. I find out that all the all the neighborhoods, as I mentioned them, were gathered and driven like a cattle through all the city to the outskirts of the city at the uh, the uh, train station where the train station is, and there I find that. Uh, all Pristina, you can say, the whole Albanian Pristina was there. And only then I, I find out that they are trying to deport us. It was a four, I, I were in that rail station at uh, the four after midnight, after noon. And we will wait for train till the one past midnight. In uh, in this, uh, in between, there were three, uh, three born, uh, three India, is it? Newborn. Newborn. <laughs> Newborns. And two uh, old men were died there. After that, the train came in one hour past midnight. And uh, everybody tried to get in because the number of people was enormous and uh, it was very very uh, small place to get to get in 
and the distance of 80 kilometers from Pristina to the uh, Macedonian border were, uh, were uh, uh, a chemical war. Yeah, uh, we passed from, uh, for about to seven hours. Yeah, we were like sardines in that train. We were no air and no water, and it looks I, 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 as I said, like on the big movies. It was out of imagination. It, it was uh, another time that uh, nothing is fan uh, more fantastic than reality. This, ma this is my experience. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Midgen. So, now you know why we are in action uh, over Kosovo and against Belgrade, and why we'll continue until these people can return to their homes in safety. Any questions? Yes. Pictures from Belgrade with uh, Dr. Ibrahim Rugova talking to Slobodan Milosevic. Uh, given what's happening on the ground there, can you tell us whether you believe those negotiations are taking part in an honest and straightforward way, or whether or not uh, there's some sort of degree of coercion on uh, Dr. Rugova at this time? For myself, I know Dr. Rugova, met him many times, and I do not believe that those things are being said uh, with in freedom. I believe he's under duress. I have again today repeated our challenge to Milosevic to let Dr. Rugova and his family go free so you can come to European capital and speak without fear. Then we will know the truth. That, um, did you, do you want to add to that in any way? Or anybody else? I can, is, no, I can just add that, of course, we know very well that there is no freedom of speech in jail. So Rugova is more or less detained, and uh, the position of Albanian movement is still that we are committed to the signatures that we've given in Paris. Robert. What was your feeling? You talked about Chinder's List and the, the <laughs> movie that's experienced there. What was the reaction of the Serbs in Kosovo to this mass movement of Albanians? Was there any reaction that was positive to help, or was it all negative? As I said, uh, the sad moment was that uh, I couldn't met any Serb that uh, that that make a question what is going on where are you leading where are you driving these people and uh, why is all this but i could also mention a, a, a activist natasha kandish who was uh, very very touched with our ex with our uh, uh, fate and uh, he, he she is trying to be helpful she was uh, nearby uh, the widow of Baran Kalmandi, and uh, you can say that there are maybe a Serbs, but I didn't heard any uh, any ra rational and any uh, voice of, of these uh, Schindl Serbs Schindlers. I didn't met yet. I mean, we've talked a lot in this um, so far that it's an action against Milosevic. But is, it, is there a feeling that this, the Serb population are very much in favor of what's going on with Kosovo um, in terms of the ethnic cleansing? And there's an awful lot of talk about this is against Milosevic, but is it much wider than that? They are not uh, well informed uh, because there is uh, uh, that uh, 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 big uh, censorship and uh, tough censorship of Milosevic television and media and I, I hope that the Serbs are not well informed. I hope. Yes. Um, I'd like to know what you think uh, the reaction of most Kosovo Albanians will be to the peace plan which President Milosevic put forward yesterday. As, as we know, it's a fake peace plan. There is no peace plan. There is no unilateral ceasefire. It was unilateral war that Mr. Milosevic is waging against Albanians since 1989. 
So Venus will reject absolutely, as I told before, we are still in position and the Paris Rambouillet uh, protest must go on. Thank you. IWPR, uh, the Kosovo Albanians have created a government in exile or an administration of sorts. Could you describe your view of the status of that administration and any contacts the British government is having with it? Well, we have contact with a wide range of Kosovo Albanian opinion and I've assembled some of them here today. Uh, what we want to do is to achieve security in Kosovo in order that we can start to implement what was envisaged at Rombu in Paris, which is a democratic, self-governing Kosovo, and it will be for the people of Kosovo themselves when they have the opportunity of that democracy to select for themselves who they want to be ruled by. British Foreign Secretary Robert Cook hosting a press conference of ethnic Albanian refugees recounting what happened to them before they left Kosovo. We must say that there is no way at this point that we can independently verify their accounts since there is no independent media there. Uh, one of the persons who spoke was Mayan Kilmendi, a former journalist. He told us about his experience of deportation to Macedonia. He said the saddest thing is that in his experience, not a single Serb raised a voice to ask why the deportation is going on. He compared the experience to Schindler's List, a movie about the Holocaust. He said he was hiding in Pristina all the time because the Serbian forces were killing prominent ethnic Albanians. Those killings had terrified the residents of Pristina. He said masked Serb forces would give people three to four minutes to leave. He found out that whole neighborhoods were pushed to the outskirts of Pristina to the railway station, and that is when he found out that they were trying uh, to deport them. Uh, he said there was very little air to breathe, no water on the trains. Another ethnic Albanian, uh, Bili uh, Dianop, Dianbalai, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name, said that the only bright moments during the 12 days of this horror was when NATO would start a strike, which gave them a sense of safety. Blair Inshalla, a member of the ethnic Albanian delegation at Rambouillet, said that these events showed that security cannot be established without NATO presence in Kosovo. He said that the ethnic Albanians were still committed to the Rambouillet peace accords, which they have signed. We will take a short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us. In Kosovo and into the arms of the Albanian police. His story is bizarre to say the least. Although the border is now closed, he claims the Serbs thought he was a member of the KLA and sent him back to his own country. He simply doesn't know why. Monitors on the ground fear the closing of the border is a sinister turn of events. Just when they reach the point uh, where they're almost uh, ready to uh, achieve freedom, all of a sudden that's taken away from them and whatever few possessions they have left has been taken away and the vehicles left on the side road and they've been sent back into interior Kosovo. So I would say that these people are absolutely terrified right now of the uncertainty of it all. The Serbs are showing no sign of a ceasefire here. Troops are strengthening their positions near the border. The no man's land between Albania and Kosovo lies deserted, a marked contrast to yesterday when this area was swollen with refugees. It's just as though a tap has been turned off. No tractors, no refugees. Until yesterday, the queues behind me stretched 24 kilometers into Kosovo. I am told the vehicles are still there, but deserted. One can only wonder what's happened to all those people. Ross Appleyard, Sky News, on the Albania-Kosovo border. Campaign so far, 100 NATO aircraft are reported to have taken off today from the Aviano Air Base in Italy, and we're just hearing that um, NATO has caused significant damage in the center of Pristina. The United States wants to send a clear message to the following named commanders of the Yugoslav Army, that is the VJ, and the Minister, Ministry of Internal Affairs, the so-called MUP, as well as all other commanders of those forces, that they are on notice that VJ and MUP forces are committing war crimes and crimes against humanity in Kosovo. The nine officers are commanders of Yugoslav military units conducting operations in Kosovo. Well, NATO spokesman Jamie Shea says Serb army and paramilitary groups are continuing their attacks on the Kosovo Liberation Army. During the daily NATO briefing, Shea said neither a ceasefire offer nor the proposed release of the three U.S. soldiers will bring an end to the strikes against Yugoslavia. A ceasefire is, of course, necessary, but it is not sufficient. It cannot simply wipe the slate clean. 
and take us back to the status quo uh, ante. Particularly as a ceasefire says nothing about the actions of those paramilitary units uh, in Kosovo that we believe are directly responsible at the moment for the systematic looting of homes and burning of homes and forced expulsion of Kosovo Albanian uh, civilians towards the, the borders. NATO officials say multiple targets in 28 locations were hit in 439 sorties overnight. We have degraded the integrated air defense system, attacked command and control centers, communication nodes, logistic supplies such as ammunition and petroleum, military repair facilities, and carefully selected bridges which will directly affect the resupply of Fry forces. In addition, we have interdicted the all-important forces in the field. And I have explained the meticulous care with which we approach the targeting process to ensure that we use the minimal amount of force to affect the maximum effectiveness with the least collateral damage and loss of civilian life. At the Daily British... From the latest round of NATO airstrikes, Brent. Thanks, Natalie. I arrived in Pristina about an hour and a half ago uh, the sun is just setting here. It won't be uh, here because this is a prime time for when NATO starts its activities given recent records of uh, the air campaign. Now, what we've seen for the first time is independent on the ground verification here in the provincial capital, Pristina, of extensive damage actually in the heart of the city. We've been taken around by officials. We've seen the destroyed post office here, which is also the center of communications. So, 24 hours ago, when NATO attacked this area, the communications, the landlines were taken out as a result of that strike. There are no mobile phones working in this area either, so in terms of communications, it is now what you might call a dead zone. As far as damage elsewhere is concerned, there is extensive collateral damage to a bank and other government buildings here. I'm just outside the headquarters of the Provincial Executive Council here where officials tell me that they have pulled out of the rubble at least 10 civilians as a result of the attack in the city centre. The Pristina centre itself and the outskirts, I have to say, appear like a ghost town. There is hardly anybody on the streets of any ethnic origin walking around the city centre. And of course, as darkness falls here, what people do remain, and it's impossible to say what numbers of the inhabitants of this capital, it was about 200,000 before the NATO bomb first fell, it's impossible to say that are here right now. All right, Brent Sadler talking with us, having a little trouble with the line there. ...to move from Macedonia to take refuge even further from home. But this offer of a temporary stay in Turkey has few takers here. Most would rather stay as refugees in Macedonia. For the moment, at least, there's a feeling of hope here, they say, going back to Kosovo. I, I feel bad because I and all, all, all these people want ba back in Kosovo. Beneath the sea of white canvas, this transit camp alone shelters 25 to 30,000 Kosovars, forced from their homes, they say, by Serb intimidation. And they're dependent on international aid to keep them alive. This camp and others like it, built by NATO, are already straining under the weight of feeding the tens of thousands of refugees on Macedonian soil. Keeping the Kosovars healthy, NATO says, is its top concern. The principal concern is sanitation. The weather's been very hot today, as you know, and we've managed to clear a lot of rubbish away. The people are being very good about collecting that rubbish. Um, we're deep trench latrines need replacing. We need people in here to help us uh, move this on. But although aid workers and NATO say no one will be forced to leave this camp, there's concern about how long they'll all be allowed to stay. The international community says it's relieving the pressure on Macedonia by offering to take in many thousands of these refugees. But from this, from this camp, only 1,000 have so far chosen to go. Matthew Chant, CNN, reporting live from Stankovets, Macedonia. Well, as you've heard, Macedonia is taking steps to relieve the refugee crisis that is threatening to tax its resources to breaking point. The border enclave of Blatza had housed tens of thousands of ethnic Albanian refugees, often in squalid conditions. On Wednesday, 25,000 were transferred to newly constructed NATO refugee centres, while another 10,000 were sent on to Albania. CNN's Ben Wiedemann has more.
This was Blatze refugee camp Tuesday, a sea of squalor and misery. And this is the camp 24 hours later. Now it's virtually empty, littered with some of the few possessions the Kosovar Albanians grab before fleeing their homeland. In the middle of the night, Macedonian authorities packed off camp residents to Albania. 7,000, according to Macedonian officials. International relief agencies were caught unaware. Despite repeated requests by UNHCR, we have yet to receive a single registration list or a, a manifest from these buses. Officials in Skopje say it is better for the refugees to leave Blatze, regardless of the destination. Do you think that the people want to stay at Blatze with uh, nothing uh, on the open air? I, I doubt that, uh, and uh, I don't think that uh, anyone was forced to leave <laughs> that place. But the United Nations High Commission for Refugees says some families taken from Blatze were separated, with buses going to different destinations. UNHCR always upholds two basic criteria when we move refugees. One is voluntariness, and the second is the ability to keep family members together. Um, right now, we're not seeing signs of either in many cases that we're coming across. Relief workers say international standards for the treatment of refugees are not being observed. There's a huge amount of people, in a way, missing at this point. And, and uh, International Red Cross is talking about, uh, very often, about uh, dignity and humanity. Now I think that uh, this is something we need here. Those unable to travel stayed behind. Dazed, this old woman just wants to return to her home. To her home in Kosovo. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, outside Blatze refugee camp on the Macedonian Yugoslav border. Well, we'll have more on the situation in Yugoslavia and the surrounding area after the short break. Please stay with us. Hit a military chemical factory in the town of Lucani, about 175 kilometers southwest of Belgrade. NATO officials say they will now focus attacks on Serbian ground troops. Russian President Boris Yeltsin.